blessed us. You have blessed us beyond measure. And Father, we just pray that you would release in our worship every frustration that people have and give them the spirit of liberty and thanksgiving. We pray, God, that those who are standing in the valley of decision, not knowing which direction, we pray through the preaching of the word and through the songs of celebration that they will find your leading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, Chapel. Good morning. Well, I'm glad to see some of us remember the time change. <laughs> I'm thinking, I wonder how many people will show up at 11 o'clock. <laughs> anyway, I want to welcome anybody who is a guest here today. Um, if you are, I would ask that you please sign our guest book in the lobby. Announcements. Today's uh, floor arrangement is donated by our newest chapel member, Cynthia Amador. <laughs> Now, um, oh, this thing's falling off. Next Sunday, even though the bulletin says Pastor K, Doug Leonard will be our worship leader. He's going to speak. Um, Where's he doing the sermon? Oh, he's good. Doug Leonard is going to do the sermon. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, next Sunday, we're going to have a speaker from City Teams, one of our missions that the chapel supports. Uh, Austin Regan will be here to tell us more about what they do. Um, Tag, I haven't memorized it yet, but together, together, together I am affirming God's grace. God's grace. Together affirming God's grace. This is your test for this week. I want you to all go home and, and uh, memorize that acronym. Don't do as badly as I did. Anyway, please sign up because this is very important. This is how we're going to grow the church. This is also how we're going to reach out to our neighbors now that the uh, the Stevens ministry is kind of on hiatus, so please, please do sign up for that. Name badges. If you're a new member and would like a name badge, uh, please just put your name on the sheet in the table in the foyer. Okay. It's time. We do this every so often. On Sunday, March 26th, the music committee is sponsoring a hymn sing in the Kobari conference room. Uh, if you want to uh, request a particular song, let them know. Uh, hymnals will be offered, and I understand the pie is really good, and the, and the coffee will be there as well. So invite your friends and neighbors. This is like a fellowship outreach thing to our community, so please come and enjoy this early celebration of the winter season. Um, all right, I think I've gotten all of that. Our first hymn of the day is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Uh, please stand if you are able.
And it's been a couple of years since I have been up here as worship leader, maybe even longer. You know I went on a sabbatical. I was back. As many of you know, I have been involved in the Village's Amateur Theater for many years as both an actor and a director. Yet, I still find it harder to be a worship leader than to memorize a hundred lines and act them out in front of a crowd of paying ticket holders. <laughs> Why? Because in this position, I am an instrument for God to us, and I don't want to blow it. <laughs> so as I was praying to God for inspiration for this week's invocation, and I will admit it, I was worrying about it, I remembered the following scripture, Matthew 6, 27. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I must admit I am very good at worrying. Now, my wife, Valen, she is an expert at worrying. <laughs> she has a black belt in worrying. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but you know it's true. <laughs> There's the old joke where a person says, I know worrying works. All the things I worry about never happen. <laughs> anyway, after meditation on this passage of scripture, it is clear that the reason I worry is because Sometimes I just really don't trust God. I mean, let's face it, God is omnipotent. So why am I worrying? It's, it's, the reason I worry is I just don't trust God enough. Uh, let's face it, um, as Romans 8 31 says, if God be for us, who can be against us? So stop worrying. And trust in the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, help us to stop praying and to trust you more. You have promised to be faithful to us. Help rid us of needless worries that we may live more fully the abundant life that you would want us to live. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I would like you now to bow your heads in a moment of silent prayer. Thy will be done, O Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, we will continue with the anthem.
doxology.
we've been sharing with you with the title, The Word for Light and Life. We shared with you last week the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. And the Lord had given a word to the prophet to comfort the children of Israel because they were in bondage. They had disobeyed God. And any time we disobey God, there's a bondage that follows. There are burdens that are added to our life. We know that they had not followed the Lord as they should have. And as a result, God had given them liberty. He had released them from and pardoned them from their sin and forgave them. And sometimes when we have been forgiven, we still don't feel that we've earned forgiveness. And they were in a place where they were still feeling the regret of their sins. And God gave Isaiah the word to comfort my people, comfort them. He didn't say it once, he said it twice. And when something is said and repeated twice, it's very important. You see, because sometimes we can be forgiven or sometimes we can be healed and we're still walking in the affliction. We still feel as if God did not answer. And God has answered us. So, God was speaking concerning a future. And the future was, he was sending a prophet who was yet to come, but was going to give them hope of deliverance. They were going to have victory. I am so glad that we who have been filled with the Spirit of God, I need you to pray for me so that I don't have a coughing fit, who have been filled with the Spirit of God, have the victory within us. The Bible says, greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. So we have to walk in the consciousness of he that is greater within us than focusing on ourselves, our limitations, but understanding that because of the grace of God that's been dispatched to us, we can walk with the consciousness of victory in our lives. I bring to you the scripture, text John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. God had foretold them that there was going to be one calling out in the wilderness, preparing the way for people's heart to receive the Messiah, to receive Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Darkness can never overcome truth. No matter how people want to conceal or bury truth, truth will always rise to the top. Hello, somebody. Verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John wrote in the beginning, in eternity, in the beginning, not in the world that we think about, but in eternity, 
he says that in the beginning was the word. Before ever anything existed. The idea of the word life, light, regeneration, grace, truth, and the revelation of God the Father in Jesus the Son and Spirit all were without form. They existed. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they existed without form. Because the Bible says they that worship God, how do we worship God? In spirit and in truth. So Jesus understood that. We needed the Holy Spirit to worship God. Not our spirit, but the Holy Spirit is going to magnify and glorify God in these earthen vessels of clay. I'm rejoicing in my soul this morning. You can't see me. You can't even hear me. Jesus was not created. But with eternity, he existed, along with the understanding that there is only one God. One God. One God in three persons. Three characteristics. Three uh, uh, ways of manifestation. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They manifest themselves in different ways. Jesus Christ is God. A person of the Trinity. It also shows that us, us that he is eternal, forever deeply connected to the loving communal relationship with God the Father. Jesus then becomes incarnate. God becomes flesh. Jesus was fully God and fully human. So that we can identify with Jesus, understanding what we go through. He understands every emotion that you have. He understands Every affliction that you will have in this life. Because he carried it. He carried our afflictions. He carried our concerns. He carried our pain. He carried you when he hung there on the cross. He is fully man. Fully God, who demonstrates this by his resurrection, which enables him to conduct our salvation. If Jesus Christ did not get up from the grave, we would have no hope for salvation. He had to demonstrate to the world that he was God, and you can't bury the truth, the truth will rise. So in that, he gives us eternal hope. Yes, we are afflicted. Yes, we get sick. Yes, we get discouraged. Yes, we get frustrated. Yes, we get angry. But we have the spirit of truth abiding us. We can get angry but not sin. Hello, somebody. The Bible says be angry, so God gives us the ability to be angry over things, but not take it to the next level. Be angry, but sin not. The word is not just the beginning, but it is the beginning of the beginning when John says, in the beginning, before creation is recorded in the Bible. He was taking you all the way back in eternity that Jesus existed in eternity. The Jehovah's Witness Watchtower translations read like this. In the beginning the word was, and the word was with God, and the word was a God. 
that eliminates people from coming to Jesus Christ. There was a God. He is not a God. He is the Lord God. The only God. Their translation leads people into error, teaching that Jesus is a God in the flesh. It's misleading. The word was God. Here, it basically means that Jesus Christ is God. There is only one God. Monotheism. One. God. And he is the eternal God who holds all things together. God is holding you together right now. Sometimes you want to fall apart. Hello? Sometimes you want to have a fit, but he is keeping you together, allowing you to walk through your situations that come in your life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us from them all. And it's not just physical afflictions. There's mental anguish along with the physical issues that we have, that we're confronted with. God holds all things and who holds us. He is the one who holds us. Jesus is the embodiment of God, the law and the revelation of the scriptures. The word logos is closest to what we can understand who God is. Even that is inefficient because nobody can really define God. The only thing we know that God is a spirit. Spirit does not have limitations. You know, as I was reading this scripture and as I was reading the word, it reminds me of when salvation occurs in a believer's life. Follow me now. A car is limited to the road. A car is bound to the road, and it has to stay on the road. But when salvation comes, it's kind of like a car having wings. And a car being able to ride on the sea. Can, do you get the picture? So when Christ comes into our lives, we are lifted up from the bondage of being down and cast down, and we are elevated. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, and old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. And so he gives us the ability to kind of ride the waves, kind of elevate ourselves when we need to get up over things. There may be, I think the inventors are inventing that car that can go on the ocean and that could take off and fly. Are you soaring with the Lord this morning? That's what I want to know. Are you soaring or are you bound to the road? Are you restricted because of your inability to know that the Spirit of God brings you liberty and sets you free? We pray to one God in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, the one mediator. There aren't many mediators, there's one. We don't pray to our honorable pope. We don't pray to the honorable mother of Jesus. We don't pray to the honorable Paul, the honorable Peter, the honorable James. We pray to Jesus, who is the victor over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Hello. He, Jesus, is our mediator between God and man. And we go to him 
and we pray to one God in Jesus' name. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hello. Why would you ever pray to someone that can't get the prayer through? I don't pray to my great, 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 great father. I pray to the one who rose from the grave, who has access into the throne room of God, who is acquainted with where I'm at and everything concerning my life. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of our need. The Holy Spirit gives each one of us boldness. Jesus says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and then you're going to be my witnesses, and then wherever you go, you're going to be a witness for me. Are you finding yourself witnessing for Jesus more and more as the day of his return is approaching? Jesus Christ is the Word, the eternal, ever-existing, one and only true God who created everything and gave us life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the life source and reason for the universe and has defeated darkness. When you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, he brings illumination. He brings revelation. You know, before you were a sinner and you read the Bible, and it was just like a story. You just read it. It didn't make sense, but you read it. But when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, he is going to be the one to illuminate the scriptures so that you can see beyond what is written in the page and understand the revelation that God is trying to speak into your soul. And it'll make sense. And you'll comprehend and you'll understand what God is trying to communicate to you. He is our source, the reason for the universe, and he has defeated darkness. He is not a God, but the very God. Verse 3, all things were made through him, and without him was nothing, anything made that was made. He made us. The scripture says in Genesis, let us make man in our image. Who, who is the us? Who was the us? Father, Son, and Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. He was the beginning, Jesus. He is the now and will be the future all with God as all are from God. We're God's children. He is the only one God who created everything, all that there was, all that is, all that will be, he created it. And see, some of you are very creative. And that comes from the Lord. The ability to imagine and create things that perhaps doesn't exist. Inventors, they create things that doesn't exist, but it's needed. It's vital. That same spirit resides in each and every one of you. And we sit thinking with limitations. He was the beginning. He is the now and will be the future. In this world that is under condemnation, corruption, deception, injustice, murder, mayhem, we pray. Psalms 51 Verse 10 through 12, create in me a clean heart, O God, and let a new and right spirit within me. 
Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. You have joy. You have joy. You have it. You have it. You have joy. You have the same joy that you express when the 49ers is winning the Super Bowl. Or the Golden State Warriors is winning their tournament. You have joy and you express it. But sometimes when it comes to what the Lord has done, you seem to be joyless. And he has provided for your eternal salvation, and you need to give him a shout. You need to praise him. I don't care where your background was, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, whatever, you need to praise God. Everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. It's not about, well, we didn't do it that way. We weren't taught that. You weren't taught how to curse either. I'm trying to teach you how to bless the Lord and get some joy in your soul, in your spirit. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The phrase, and the life was the light of men, is the Greek imperfect tense. This means that the life began to be the light of men in the past and continues to be so in this present time. Jesus is still the light of our lives. There's light in you. There's hope in you. There's wisdom in you. There's power in you. There is a presence in you that's not like those who have no knowledge and no relationship with Jesus Christ. You have a presence. And when you go into the den of iniquity, people are going to know that you don't belong there. You don't have to open your mouth. The spirit of the Lord is going to be in you, bringing light into the darkness. Come on, somebody. I know this. They'll be saying, who is that person? Where did they come from? Because the light in you will expel the darkness. Oh, I wish people would really understand and receive what the Lord has provided for them. The Son of God is the source and essence of life itself. When lost in darkness and death, the best place to look for redemption is the source of all life. God takes no pleasure in our death. That was not his will. He did not want us to die. That was our choice. We chose death over life. The Son of God is our source and not Satan, the source of death, who is our adversary, who comes to steal your joy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have joy. So why aren't you rejoicing? Why aren't you rejoicing? Who the Son sets free is free indeed. We need to exercise the joy that is down within us. Sometimes when you have that old, that old uh, well in the backyard and you go for some water, you got to work that pump. You got to pump that water up 
And the Bible says, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. There's a well within you that people need to drink from your source, from your fountain. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, uh, majesty on high, Hebrews 1, 3. He offers spiritual life to the spiritually dead and eternal life to those who live by faith. Every day, in some way, your faith is being challenged. But we walk by faith. We trust God. We believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly what? All that we think all that we ask, he's able to exceed that. Now, just suppose you walked in that verse of Scripture, that you walked believing that God is able to do anything. Would that boost your confidence? Would that feel empowering to you? Well, you have the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit who is not bound to the road. To the rigmarole, but who gives us release and hope and victory. In the darkness of suffering and sin, as evil and wickedness continue to have such a cruel impact in our existence in the world, it would appear that people would be flocking, flocking to receive the light and come to the light, but that's not the case. Don't get all tied up in politics. You know they're lying. Even if, they t if, even if they're telling you what you want to hear, they are lying. We better cast our vote for Jesus Christ. Amen. We better look to the Lord. There is no other salvation. You see, we think the elected officials are going to save us. But they're not. There's no other name given among men that we must be saved. That's salvation than the name of Jesus Christ. Well, you know, Pastor, you're not supposed to be preaching about politics. I'm not. I'm preaching about Jesus and what our focus should be. Let's not get it twisted. So in the world, all these situations are occurring because the world is under condemnation. We pray Psalms 51 verses 10 to create in me a, a clean heart. We want to walk with our hearts protected from the offenses of men. Sometimes we can get all tied up in knots concerning something that is not our business. The Lord is in charge. Pray to the Lord to convict those. He offers spiritual life to the spiritual dead, eternal life to those who live by faith. Verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If you're feeling depressed, you ask the Lord to lift that spirit. It is a spirit. Ask the Lord to lift that spirit. If you're obsessed, ask the Lord to lift that off of you. If you're stressed out, ask the Lord to lift that up from you. The sad part is that God has brought light into the world. And people are opposed to the truth. Many have closed their hearts and minds to the light. 
Love darkness and hate the light because their deeds were evil. Evil people cover evil people. They may be at odds against each other, but brother and sister, when it all boils down to it, they partner up and cover each other's backs because they don't want to be exposed. But the light still shines. And God will bring everything that is hidden to light. Understand that. They love darkness. John 3, 19 through 21. This sets the tone for Jesus' purpose and why he had to redeem a broken and sinful humanity, most of whom will not accept his gift of grace. Oh, they'll celebrate Christmas. They'll celebrate Easter. Let's get some eggs here. Let's color them up and let's get the bunny. Let's get the chocolate. They'll celebrate that and never receive the grace gift that God gives them. They'll decorate. They'll put the rabbits out there. You know what I'm saying. But they'll never give Jesus Christ the preeminence of their lives. They go through the motions. But Jesus is still here knocking on the door with no handle. The handle is on the inside. So you have to open the door to allow him to come in. This sets the tone for Jesus' purpose, to redeem us. One, God can't be destroyed by anything. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. Omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's all powerful. God will always triumph over evil. Number three, with the creation of good and free will, sin entered the world, not by the fault of God. He gave us free will to choose right and wrong. It is the enemy that deceives you to think that you can get away, that you can just continue to go on existing like you've been existing, ignoring God. But there's coming a day soon that we will give an account Number three, the creation of good and free will. Sin happened by man. Verse number four, there is spiritual conflict in the world. You agree? Evil is defeated by the result of growing faith in God. We live by faith. We say we live by faith. Let's live by faith. The condition of evil was created by man. Whenever we choose evil, we turn away from our loving creator and we bite the hand that feeds us. Yay or nay? The hand that sustains us. Evil and sin opposes what is good and righteous. Goodness and mercy do not make sense to the one who is worldly and self-focused. Grace and mercy and goodness, it doesn't register to them. It's all about me. It's all about what I can get. However, when one is with God, he or she can understand his principles of personal trust and obedience. This darkness can and then be overcome, will be overcome because Jesus Christ overcame it for us and we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. You are a conqueror. You're not a wimp. You're not a wimp. Your powerful influence in this world as long as you abide in the light and walk in the confidence that God is with you. 
It doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't sound like it. But he is with you. Amen, somebody. So goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Our application, the word provides eternal security in a world under condemnation. Don't think that the only way that people change is through an encounter with the living God. You cannot change anybody. I can't change anybody. It takes the work of the Holy Spirit to convict people of what is right and what is wrong and lead them into the path of righteousness. So all we have to do is live it, tell it, and show it. The word has been given to dispel the darkness and keep us from falling. You have received authority from this word to be all that God has called you to be. It is up to you to will it. Lord, I'm willing to be your servant. I'm willing to be what you want me to be. I'm willing to be a conduit of your grace and your mercy, and your forgiveness and acceptance. Are you willing to let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and bring glory to God? Father, I thank you for the spoken word that has spoken to all of us. Lord, let it begin with me. And Lord, we're not asking that it will be a trickle-down effect. But Father God, we pray that it will begin with us who are in leadership. And we encourage others by our example. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand. Thank you for your prayers. I didn't have a coughing fit. <laughs> Prepare to sing the benediction song. Father, I pray that you'd watch, continue to watch over us, protecting us from danger, seen and unseen, and spirits in this world, Lord. Keep us from spirits that are contrary to your will and purpose. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those who you have spoken to in this assembly and who you've empowered with your word and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark.